So a bit ago we did a review on the Apple Magic Keyboard, a great accessory for your iPad Pro, but it was a bit on the pricey side. Now, what happens if you can't afford a Magic Keyboard? This is where the Logitech Folio Touch comes in. A direct competitor to the Magic Keyboard, but at half the price. Now, is it worth it? Let's check it out. The Logitech Folio Touch is a great looking case. It is made up from a great textured fabric material which gives it a premium feel. The area where you place your iPad is a thick rubberized casing which is very rugged and it feels very similar to the rubber portion that you would get from an OtterBox case. One thing to keep in mind is that if you own an iPad Air, you won't be able to use the Touch ID since the lock button is covered. The keyboard itself is well built, but it's not as solid as the Magic Keyboard. There's a little bit of give when it comes to bending. Even with that, I would feel more comfortable if I were to drop my iPad in the Folio Touch than if I were to do it with the Magic Keyboard. The edges along the keyboard are rather sharp, not enough that they make it unusable, but it's definitely noticeable when you are typing. Moving on to the typing experience. It's good, but it's not great. The size of the keys are basically the same size as what you would get on the Magic Keyboard. They're very responsive, but they feel rather mushy and I'll put a sample of how they sound right here. Now the biggest difference here is the addition of the row of function keys along the top. And I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't think that the lack of function keys on the Magic Keyboard was a big deal. But after using the Logitech Folio Touch, I get it now. The ability to use and control your iPad without actually touching your iPad makes a huge difference. Going from left to right, you get your escape slash home key, screen brightness up and down, on-screen keyboard controls, search, keyboard brightness, media controls, volume controls, and finally, your lock button. What's really cool is you can actually take a screenshot with the function keys, which is a plus. If we look at the trackpad, it is slightly bigger than the one found on the Magic Keyboard. It offers full multi-touch gesture control just like on the MacBooks. The difference here is that it only clicks from the bottom. Coming from the Magic Keyboard, it took a little bit of getting used to, but it's not a big deal. There's an adjustable kickstand on the back which allows you to place the folio touch in four different modes. Typing, sketching, viewing, and reading or portrait mode. I'm glad that they included an option for portrait mode here. If you guys remember, this was one minor thing that I complained about the Magic Keyboard. The one thing I don't like is the fact that the keyboard is exposed. So whether you're holding your iPad or have it laying on a flat surface, you either have a firm grip on the keys or you are scratching or damaging them on the surface. The kickstand is a little on the flimsy side. If you're making adjustments to the position, especially when it's on your lap, the whole iPad moves and you'll have to readjust it back to its original position. Another thing that's really flimsy is the hinge that connects the iPad to the keyboard. It's not really a hinge, it's just a piece of fabric that connects the two pieces together. So if you're not careful, the iPad will either fall back or slam shut. As for battery life, just like the Magic Keyboard, this case greatly affects your battery life. I ended up getting the same two days of usage on the Folio Touch with my iPad uh, as I did on the Magic Keyboard. Now, of course, depending on what your usage is, your results are going to vary as well. One thing to mention is that the Folio Touch is noticeably thicker than the Magic Keyboard. The thickness is almost the same as my old MacBook Pro, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to mention too is the magnetic flap on top is a great way to keep your Apple Pencil safe and secure. There's even a little cutout where you can slide your pencil in, uh, which is really cool. Now I don't have an Apple Pencil myself, but I figured I'd show you guys using a regular pen. Finally, if we look at the price, 
The Logitech Folio Touch comes in at $209.99 Canadian, or for you American viewers, it comes in at $159.99, which, again, is about half the price of the Magic Keyboard. Overall, the Logitech Folio Touch is a great alternative to the Magic Keyboard. It offers similar functionality with an added bonus of a much needed row of function keys. Although it doesn't feel quite as premium or as solid as the Magic Keyboard, it does offer more protection against drops. You don't get the added bonus of an extra USB-C port and the design isn't quite as elegant, but at half the price, I feel like those are things that can be overlooked. I will say that going from the Magic Keyboard to the Folio Touch, you definitely do notice the difference in quality and especially in the typing experience. The Magic Keyboard is just better in this regard. But if you're starting fresh and the Folio Touch is the first keeper that you get, you will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and slap that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment box down below. If you want to keep seeing more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next video.